Good evening, my genetically coding math experts. I'm here to share with you why I just called you that and why I use that as the pet name to greet all of my students in class every day. I'm gonna give you the same annual speech that they get from me, but you also get the bonus of the backstory of where it came from. I started with a student a long time ago that let's say was less than actively engaged in class, and I caught him trying to eat Skittles. So I asked him to put him away and they tried to sneak some more. So I took the Skittles and dropped them in the wastebasket, from which erupted this cloud of color. And it was quite entertaining to the class, but it was visibly disturbing to the student. It was more of a reaction I was looking for. So I took him outside and kind of smoothed things over. And almost in tears, he confided to me that the reason he wasn't participating in my class was the fact that his family did not give him the math gene. He said his dad didn't give it to him, his uncle didn't give it to him, and his grandfather didn't give it to him. Why it was the men in the family who were taking the rap, I don't know, but there they stood, shouldering the blame. So this put me on a campaign, actually it was more like a rampage, to convince every one of my students that they were born to be mathematicians. That this is encoded in every cell of all of our bodies. So every year now I'm given the speech that we have five things that we're genetically coded to do better than any other creature on the planet. The first three you guys mastered before you got to me. The fourth one we will spend the entire year uh, developing you in this class, and the fifth one you spend the rest of your life trying to figure out. The students very quickly realize that those first three are to walk, talk, and read and write. That while the apes may stand on two legs, they prefer to walk on all fours. Yes, birds chirp, but they don't communicate in the level of a language complexity that we humans do. And yes, a dog might pee on a bush to mark its territory, but it cannot urinate the words no trespassing. <laughs> we have the ability of these things because it is in our DNA to do so. And so is the ability to do mathematics. We have this ability to ponder the workings of our universe and create conventions to represent them, but I must concede to you that there are still some animals on the planet that do math better than I do, and the bees are one of them. Do you know when they build their honeycombs, they make perfectly uh, regular hexagons? All the sides are congruent, and every one of those angles is 120 degrees. And yet after nearly three decades of drawing geometric figures on the board, I cannot reach that level of <laughs> But I can ask, ask a question, why hexagons? Why don't the bees express through inner artists and every once in a while pick another shape? It has to do with mathematics. It starts with the tessellations, that these shapes must tie without leaving any gaps. They also must be regular and congruent, because those really ain't no bees insist on doing the same thing over and over and over again. Even with these limitations, that offers three options. So I ask again, why hexagons? For that, we need to go a little deeper to the isoparametric principle, which states that for any given perimeter, the circle yields the largest area. So of our three finalists, the bees choose the hexagon. And for that reason, we have to get really up close and personal with the bees and see that they actually excrete the wax from their bodies to create these honeycombs. So I put it to you. If you had to squirt out of your tail end the materials it took to build your house, would you want the most bang for your buck? <laughs> so with all that mathematical prowess going in to these hexagons, how do I still claim genetic superiority in mathematics? It's because the bees do not understand the why behind what they're doing, and I do. And if you've been able to follow this stream of mathematical consciousness that I just took you through, then you do too, and you've proven my point that every student in our class can indeed learn mathematics because they have the DNA to do it, and the bees do not. Which leads me to our fifth, that we are genetically coded to know that definitely someday we will die. And therefore we contemplate the meaning of life. The cat thinks as long as it stays away from the dog, it lives forever. We know that's not true, so we wonder why we're here and why we were given these amazing gifts. So I dedicate my talk to Brian Greger. The student that started it all that unfortunately died three weeks before he would have graduated high school. But he doesn't want you to remember him as such. He wants you to remember him as the ill-confident freshman that became a senior who completed all the math requirements to get into college, got accepted, and intended to major in oceanography, a STEM field. He wants you to remember him as the poster child of growth mindset before it was ever a catchphrase. So in his memory and to his honor, I encourage and challenge you with the faith that they can learn and that we can teach it to them, share the mysteries of our planet with our amazingly gifted and genetically coded math experts. <laughs>